Welcome to Let's Curate webcast series. Our second international jewelry exhibition, Opulent Handmade Treasures, is now live. This year, our objective is to present designers who thrive on maximalism as part of their creative core. Today, we're presenting an amazing talent. Metalsmith and designer Do Yoon Kim has presented his work at many prestigious events, such as the Craft Trend Fair in 2022. He has also won the Excellence Award at the 21st and 22nd International Jewelry Design Contest by the Korea Jewelry Design Association. Hi, Do Yoon, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take us a little bit um, through the education you've received. So have you had a formal education in metal craft or has it been more organic? Um, it was a formal, but I would say it's a half formal and half organic. Um, my major is metal art and design. So we learn every techniques of the metal and also we make various things in metal such as jewelry, furniture, lightning, and product, object. Um, because we have only four years of lectures and sessions, it's hard to like learn deeply about the jewelry, which I was interested in. So I found the technique on the book and um, using the book, I experimented a lot of techniques and failed a lot. And I collected the data and made the technique mine. So I will say half, Formal, yes, but half organic also. You know, I, I love one part that you just mentioned right now about how you learn to fail. Um, I think many people uh, who are just beginning on their journey for a, in any field, there is this fear of failure and they always feel like they need to be really great right when they begin. Mm -hmm. But actually true creativity comes out when you fail and you find, and like you said, you find your own voice. Um, yes. So I'm... I'm you know, it's interesting that you mentioned that you do value the fact that you did fail and you mm. learned from your failure. That's that's important, I feel, for many aspiring designers to know that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, from since it's been a combination of formal and organic, mm -hmm. what part of the formal education that you received you felt was most useful? Um. I met a professor when I was in the junior year, in the third grade. I was having a difficulty with soldering two sheets of metal, which was silver, and which is kind of easy for me right now, but it was hard time back then. I need some of a device from the professor, so I asked her, if, is there any tips for this? Is there any way to do this? And like, she smiled and like asked me back why you use solder and I was kind of shocked she asked me that and I think of it and say that like it's a silver sheet so the only way to do is welding or soldering but soldering is more effective way so I use that why do you ask me that professor and she asked me back that your purpose is to stick the two metal together so why don't you use epoxy bond and i was shocked and stunned i've never thought about it and with this face i asked her back like isn't it illegal to do it to the metal <laughs> and she added like sometimes if you have a great time in that field for a long time like you try to figure something out to the used way like most used way to do it so you kind of miss the simplest the easiest way to solve it and you know if, if you want to stick together like you can use a bone why it this matter it's not illegal at all and and she added like the simple technique is not a sin. It's not a thing to be ashamed of. Rather, it's a better thing for you and the audience because people, when they see your work, they are focused on the story and how it looks. Is it uh, able to buy something like that? Uh, rather than how much you put an effort to it, how much the hard skill it is. So um, stick a, um, um, take a, back step and see from the view of the beginner or you can do a child yeah um think more creative and more broadly and that conversation was the most useful um 
when I find in the former education. That's that's an incredible story. And I think it shows how important it is to have a teacher and yeah. a teacher who just doesn't go by the book. She, yeah. she forced you to think in a way that you your mind didn't go there, but she forced you to think that way. And I think that's the benefit yeah. of having a mentor or a teacher who's been in the field for many, many years. So um, it's interesting. So it's formal education does have an important role, I feel, for a great foundation. Um, mm -hmm. And then you have to, I guess, find your own style and your own aesthetics. So um, I'm glad you mentioned this because it is it is important for, again, for people to know that going through formal education or learning by yourself, either way you will find your way, but sometimes it's nice to have an experienced person uh, mm -hmm. tell you the way ahead. Yes. Um, so you graduated in 2022 and were immediately part of the Craft Trend Fair and the 22nd International Jewelry Design Contest, which is, that to me is fantastic. You graduated and you were part of these high profile events. How was your experience? Uh, it was a great opportunity to participate in those events. Um, to be honest, I feel I wish I prepared more, but like, I learned how to deal with clients, um, to deal with more effective display, how to sell the products, um, how to deal with unexpected situations, things like that. Um, after I graduated my bachelor, I thought I was a solid artist who can go to the field right away, but the truth was I was just a youngling to deal with all the situations. So I got a lot of experience a lot and I wish I prepared more, but in the same time, I feel I finally in the group of the craftsmen. So it's a whole new world. So I want to experience more. I want to fail more. I want to like explore more. Yeah, that was the story. That's incredible. And it's, you know, you should obviously be extremely proud of yourself because like I said, these are very high profile events and you got into them as soon as you graduated. And it's, such a refreshing attitude to have to be open to learning even after mm -hmm. you were accepted for the contest so i think kudos to you that you you know took it the right way and you learned what you needed to do but you also learned some other aspects of dealing with clients um yes. tell us about your collection for our opulent handmade treasures exhibition um First thing to start, like my works are mostly inspired by the concept of a house, home, and also by the traditional architecture and also patterns. It's all about my story. And um, to begin with, uh, I will firstly talk about the Dynasty Palace necklace. Um, when you visit the historical site, such as palace, you're only focused on the king or the historic site, the historic uh, palace. Um, I want to I wanted to focus more about the other story that are neglected inside of it. Um, I focus on the servant. Um, the servant has to pass all the way through to meet the king. So I want to express that story inside my necklace. So the I used red tourmaline uh, channel setting on my piece, which is the main wall and the outside wall. If you, if the servants enter that, uh, you meet a gate, you have to pass all the roads, look like a maze, and then you cross the bridge, and finally you go to the drawing room to wait for the king's approval. After the king's approval, you can finally enter the king's palace. I want to use that story that is hidden inside of the palace history. So that's the story for the Dynasty Palace. And the second one is Dancheong Giwa uh, necklace, which Dancheong is a wood coloring traditional thing throughout the nation, uh, the Asia. And Giwa is traditional roof tile in Asia. Um, uh, I focus on the eaves, on the soffit of the roof. Um, it's on the roof, so we have to look it up. And mm -hmm. it gives a really weird warp. It looks way longer and it gives a perspective view and it looks like a spaceship to me. Um, I 
feel that was really interesting, so I wanted to express that on my necklace. And also, uh, I use red, green, and blue gems inside of it, which is kind of childish combination color, but our ancestor used that really, really pretty, and it was astonishing. I wanted to express that three combination inside my necklace piece, so I used three stones and made a necklace. Um, for the next thing, it's a Helios. It's a um, uh, uh, praise for the sun. Whenever I see the sun, I feel warm, like the temperature, the power. It was the most beautiful thing I could find in the nature. So I want to express that inside my piece so I can keep it whenever I feel down, I feel bad. I see that necklace and I feel the power again. I use fancy yellow sapphire, orange sapphire, citrine, hesonite, and garnet, and white cubic zirconia to express the colors of the sun. And I made it to the necklace. So, and it's my favorite one <laughs> um, throughout my artist experience. Um, the lastly, for my grandmother, which I call it Grandma Lakite. Mm -hmm. um, is to is a gift for my grandmother. Uh, um, she's the biggest supporter for me because whenever I have a hard time, I discuss with my grandmother who is who has a lot of experience of the life. And she supports me a lot. She tells me good stories and you can do it. She supports me a lot. So for her uh, birthday gift, I wanted to thank her with this piece. Um, I use a malachite because it, the green color is really suits her, and I use the Art Deco style, 1940 like Art Deco style, to use and in my piece. I surround it with some cubics, and I use her necklace because my birth gem is her. So whenever she um, puts the necklace, she want she will remember me, right? So that's the stories for my pieces on the exhibition. You know, Doyun, when I saw your pieces, when I was holding it in my hand, when it came to New York, mm -hmm. you know, the word opulent is perfect for your collection. <laughs> because so when, you. I, when I held the pieces in my hand, I almost felt like this is jewelry fit for a king or a queen. It's like it was it's so royal. And I'm, you know, I'm sure our viewer, viewers will see uh, the products will feel the same. So the colors and the way you've designed it and it's it's astonishing because it's a mix of very traditional stories that you've taken the idea from but the presentation is just so contemporary um mm. and i love color so i i was <laughs> so thrilled when i saw all those beautiful pieces you know those colorful gems just glistening in the sunlight it was incredible and i can't wait for our viewers to see more of your work uh, but i'm curious to know what are your plans for the future for my uh, future first the immediate future i have two upcoming exhibition one is alumni group exhibition on december and another one still in the december it's 2023 craft transfer i'm doing it again yes i'm participating again yeah. And after that, I'll have to fully focus on my master graduation exhibition. And the theme is geometric kirigami um, technique into metal sheets. That's my thesis. Uh, after I graduate master, I want to see a new world. I want to meet the young like artists who make like other than jewels such as furniture, lightning, and who use glass, wood, all types of materials. So I will try to apply to the young artist group, craftsman group. And if I have chance, I really want to study further and work in New York where you stay in because the great artists all gather there, right? Yeah. I have no doubt I quit like jewel. I will stick to it. I will make jewels for the whole life. So I'll keep trying to express the beauty inside of it. And one day I will become a great artist. I will try to do that, yes. I have no doubt in terms of your <laughs> greatness. I really think you are, you have found your path and you know, some people take some time. I feel like you have just discovered it at such a young age. 
which is fantastic. Your head is brimming with creative ideas. Um, you've already figured out how to build on it, you know, with, with your masters and participating in exhibitions. You're just going to be bigger and better next year. And we are so honored to have you and your collection in our exhibition, Doyun. I am incredibly thankful. Um, mm -hmm. I want our audience members to know that Opulent Handmade Treasures will go on until December 28th. And we hope you all enjoy and purchase these one-of-a-kind masterpieces. For more updates, follow us on Instagram at let's underscore curate. Happy curating, everyone. <laughs>